Now, the first part is taking the view of the youth, as we see so many of you here in the room. Thank you very much. And I'm sure many more are joining us online as well from around Europe and who knows, maybe even further afield. So we're delighted that you're taking the interest. I think it shows a lot of commitment and a lot of spirit and indeed courage sometimes to come up and talk about these issues and really tell policymakers what it is you want to hear and see from them. So we're going to hear about the youth needs, priorities and expectations from an EU approach on allergy and asthma that will integrate the youth perspective. And of course, this year, 2022, is indeed the year of youth for the European Parliament, something that the European Commission President, Ursula von der Leyen, clearly last year as one of her, her aims to bring more young people into the discussion. So with that, I will, I will start by introducing you to our first youth speakers. Thank you very much. Indeed, we have joining us uh, of, see, members of the Allergy and Asthma Youth Parliament and also in her case, a graduate medical student studying at Queen's University in Belfast, Emer O'Vork. Emer, if you pull the microphone towards you and hit the red button, we would love to hear your thoughts. Dear members of the European Parliament, colleagues of the Youth Parliament, distinguished guests, my name is Emer O'Rourke and I am a member of the European Allergy and Asthma Youth Parliament. But first and foremost, I'm a patient living with allergies. I'm 25 years old and in those 25 years, I've had six near-death experiences. And more importantly, all were due to human error and completely avoidable. You see, I have a nut allergy. If I ingest a juice of peanuts, my body goes into anaphylactic shock, my throat closes, I could lose consciousness and die. But I'm not alone. More than 150 million Europeans have an allergy. And there's no survival guide on how to live with allergies. Much of our own learning about our condition is through trial and error and adapting our lives to protect ourselves. For me, eating out is one of the biggest challenges. Dining out with friends and family is such an essential part of our social fabric. The finding a way to do so is really challenging and time consuming for individuals with allergies and intolerances. Quickly coming to the realization that I just couldn't walk into anywhere for food like my friends, I compiled a list of allergy friendly places as a guide for myself and my younger brother who also has a nut allergy because I knew he was gonna face the same challenges. So after meeting others in similar allergy journeys who've shared their experiences through conversations I developed a single platform to unite our dining experiences called Allergy Act. It helps individuals find reliable food options aligned with their dietary requirements, based on reviewed experiences from others, giving them the opportunity to explore a wider range of recommended dining experiences. Now, this was my attempt to help protect myself, my brother, and others with allergies within the allergy community, because at that time, there were no other supports available. Having spent many hours in doctor's offices and hospitals growing up, I was also struck by the service gaps, the lack of awareness and misconceptions in not just the food industry, but also the health system. My final year dissertation focused on individuals with food hypersensitivities, and it first sparked my interest in the research field and highlighted the pivotal role that research could play in changing this narrative. So fueled by my interest in this area, I worked on allergy research projects in Ireland, in the UK and in the US. And some of our main findings over the years are, if you have a food hypersensitivity, it's going to cost you. Socially, we found that it's led to a lower health status and quality of life. And in fact, fatal anaphylaxis is more common amongst teens and young adults than any other age groups. But one of the leading ways to help solve these problems and help improve the health, safety and quality of life of those affected is to help drive research to be completed in collaboration with patients, the health sector, the food industry and the public. So this can improve both the quality and relevance of research. It can generate robust data, which can then be used as the evidence base to help inform policies guidance and future supports. So in line with this work, I'm also actively involved in allergy charities and support groups and found that although parents attended and benefited from these groups, young people were less likely to, to, to attend and therefore their needs were unmet. 
So being surrounded by parents' conversations about allergy-friendly preschools and what to do when baby tummy breaks out in a rash because now he's allergic to nappies, I found that I set out to find something a bit more relevant to my experiences. So I then found the European Allergy and Asthma Youth Parliament, and I knew this was where I had to be. So not just for myself, but for the allergy community, because this was where we could meet change, and this was where we would be listened to. So ultimately, I knew that the Youth Parliament aims at bringing the voice of young patients, the patients that face different problems than adult patients, with distinct needs, priorities and capabilities for the disease, to the forefront of policymaking. So this is why the EU Non-Communicable Diseases Initiative is one of the biggest opportunities for the voice of all patients living with allergy and asthma, especially for patients like me and my colleagues of the Youth Parliament present here today, to be heard, to be taken into account, and to have a youth in all policies integrated approach in the EU policies to come. To integrate the voice of young people, we recommend making use of digital and social media tools to allow for fresh, real feedback from young patients on their realities. To support awareness raising, raising initiatives at a local level in schools and universities. And consult with young patients directly when drafting policies affecting us, such as the NCD initiative, as allergy and asthma are diseases more prevalent for the youth. So I thank you for your attention today, and I look forward to the discussion of the panellists on the integration of the voice of the patients, and particularly young ones living with allergy and asthma, in the policy actions of the EU NCD initiative. And now pass the floor to my colleague of the Youth Parliament, Dunya. Thank you very much. Dear members, present here, dear guests, I apologize, present here and online. My name is Dunja Stejanovic, and I have been a member of European Allergy and Asthma Youth Parliament since it was established in 2020. Um, as it was already mentioned, allergy and asthma are two of the most common uh, chronic diseases that are present. And something that is not underlined enough is the amount of youth patients that are among them. Uh, currently in Europe, there are over 10 million people living with asthma. They're under 45. And combining asthma with atopic dermatitis and allergies in general, there are over 13.5 million people under 25, including myself. I'm 24. Something brief about my, uh, my story with allergies is that uh, I've had my first... Um, injection of antihistamines when I was like five or six. And later, uh, not until high school actually, I was officially diagnosed with asthma. But I spent uh, pre uh, previous several years um, wiping my nose every day, red eyes, dry eyes, coughing, wheezing, lack of sleep. I was the number one in my class for head and tissues, but then it turned out to be asthma. And in, uh, in the beginning of, of college, I was officially diagnosed with atopic dermatitis. And I didn't know what that was. I didn't know I had the predisposition to have it. And it turned out that I'm the kind of book example of having, having an atopical constitution. I have atopic dermatitis, allergic rhinitis, and um, allergic asthma. And some short story that I want to say about a little personal is that uh, having the exacerbation of that atopic dermatitis, I remember Walking into, walking into a shower, my uh, entire skin was covered with wounds and uh, every dot of that water was uh, quite painful. So I remember telling myself that I will not take any other shower when my skin gets better, any other shower for granted again. And I remember that almost every time, every day. So uh, something that has helped me a lot beside my family, of course, is, uh, are those national associations that are present and National Association of Serbia has also led me to this uh, European Youth Parliament and I'm uh, truly privileged for having the opportunity to speak in behalf of Youth Parliament and to speak in front of you. And um, I also want to acknowledge the vulnerability that adolescents have and uh, how vulnerable they are, uh, adolescents and young adults. And they are an extremely important group that we should be dedicated to. And I think we cannot make a change only if we, if we all work together. So 
I want to thank you all for your attention and I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing the discussion between the stakeholders. Thank you very much, Dunya, and of course, you're yourself are a pharmacy student and a member of the Allergy and Lean National Patient Organization in Serbia. So I think you've raised some interesting points, including diagnosis, which is one I'm sure we'll mention. Mm -hmm.